How are you, man? I'm great, man. I'm so looking forward to this fight. It's been eight months, going almost eight months since my last fight on New Year's Eve. So, how I'm many, fine. how many fights have you done in Ryzen? I've only had one, so this will be my second fight. Okay. Yep. So let me ask you this, because when I, when I first met you in here on these mats, I knew that you had been in the UFC, but I didn't realize like how many. You had quite a few in the UFC. Yeah, I had six fights. Six fights. That's a good amount of fights, right? Yeah. And then uh, you've been in some other organizations, and then now with, with Rising, what, what is that like, first of all? Because, I mean, to me, like, Rising seems like a, a throwback to kind of like the Pride Days, you know? It's the, it's the Japan uh, venue, the atmosphere, of course, the boxing ring. I want to talk about all that stuff, man. So, what's that whole experience like for you? Man, it's been awesome. Like, you know, obviously, I feel like, uh, you know, the UFC, my career kind of. Uh, was picked really soft for whatever reason, you know, business is business. But uh, going forward to it, the company and, and having two, two performance, uh, you know, bonuses added to that. Uh, I feel like my career kind of was just getting started there, you know. But, you know, you always got to find the silver lining when it comes to any, you know, any situation that changes a uh, new beginning in your life. And uh, to be honest, like, I've always been a, been a fan of pride. I've always uh, loved the Japanese MMA rules, like with the stomps and the kicks on the ground and the knees to the head on the um, and, you know, it's just a, it's a piece of, like, you know, I grew up as a kid, like, watching Pride and just, like, to be able to, like, go fight in Japan in the same arena, same rule set, it's just, dude, it's been epic. And, uh, you know, I really, uh, I'm really fortunate, actually. And, you know, you never know, uh, you know, after I win this title in Japan, maybe it comes full circle, I become a free agent, and you never know where I end up. You know, they'll have to come down to who's paying the most. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to imagine for you to, for you to go halfway across the globe, right? All the way across the world, really, man. To to fight when you when you live right here in Las Vegas, in Mecca. Like, I would think the pay would have to be pretty lucrative. I, I imagine it's worth your while, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, but uh, Co compared to the regional scene, for example. Oh, for the yeah, you can't you can't, you can't survive on the regional scene. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, fighters trying to be on the regional scene here, like you know, you almost you got another day job too. You know, and that's that's just not possible with where I'm at in my career. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's, it's financially stable, but um, you know I'm not really doing it just for the money. But I, I'm doing it because you know, I feel like I have, a, I have a really good shot to win a world title, and uh, and I'm you know I'm seizing that opportunity with everything I got. You came from a wrestling background originally in Iowa, right? right growing up. Yeah, yeah. And so the, the biggest difference that I see in, in, in an organization like Ryzen is obviously the ring is a factor, you know, because yeah. as a wrestler. You know, you want to have the cage. So that's the trade-off. You talk about those rules. They do have those rules that are uh, a little bit more aggressive and, yeah. you know, allows you to do more. But what's it like um, taking the L in the cage away? Does it, have, does it change the way that you approach the fight? Without a doubt. Yeah, completely. The whole fight changes, whether you're fighting Japanese rules or American MMA rules. And not having a cage, too, you know what I mean? Like, that's a, that's a weapon that you don't get to have when you're in a ring. But there's a trade-off, you know what I mean? Like... In a cage, you can press somebody against the fence and really wear them out and drain on them and cause them, uh, you know, you can really just smash them into the fence, you know. Uh, the ring, you can't do that, but your arms can slip through to the body. You can get nice body locks, too. So, I mean, it's, uh, uh, there's definitely, like, a, a you know, a trade-off there, too. Plus, like, you know, the, the, the Japanese way, uh, it kind of entices more of a finish, more submission and more knockout kind of fights. Whereas opposed to like Americans, sometimes you have to, you can see like wrestlers going out there and just laying on somebody and get out of win. Like that doesn't work over there. You know what I mean? So you got to fight to finish the fight, and that works for my style anyway. So that's a good point. You know, uh, I didn't think about that. You know, there are other like advantages actually, like the body lock, for example. And Max Roshkov was telling me, you know, he likes it because you know he fights a lot in. Uh, FFC here in Las Vegas, and they fight in a ring as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you know what? I like it because what, if I put a guy on his ass, he ain't getting back up because you can't use the cage now to the wall walk. So, yeah, it's, it's a totally different, it's a totally different dynamic. Totally different fight. Yeah, totally yeah. different fight, man. You, you got, you know, you're getting up from the middle. Like, you know, the cage is, the cage is a good weapon. I mean, it's a good ally, but it's also a, a, an enemy, too, if, if you're fighting somebody who knows how to use the cage. So, it's just one more element of the fight that's not in there, but. At you know where, where the cage is taken away, there's two or three more elements that change the fight too. You know, get stomped when they're standing on the you know when they're standing, get kneed in the head when you're supposed to be grappling. You know, you know what I mean? Like it totally changes the fight. 
Oh, I lied. There's one more thing that I did. I, uh, this is Johnny Case, by the way. Johnny Case. I, did, I never mentioned your name when we started. It'll be on the headline <laughs> in the YouTube video. But, but uh, I wanted to talk about your nickname. I always love talking about nicknames. And I don't think I asked you this when I talked to you uh, a while back when you first came out here. Because uh, I didn't know your nickname. Yeah. Where does Hollywood come from? So, uh, I grew up in Iowa. I grew up, yeah. you know... Uh, Kind of like that. I was a kid. I was into like motocross, kind of like surfer, kind of kind of look. I had like uh, had blonde hair back then, so I kind of looked like a California kid anyway. <laughs> and uh, my first two fights were like highlight reel knockouts, like a thirty second knockout and like a, a minute fifteen knockout. And then I was I was on my way into the fighters' meeting for my third amateur fight, and um, the promoter was like, "Oh, here comes Hollywood! Here comes Hollywood!" And then it just it stuck, man. I like that. <laughs> I, I have a similar story not as cool I didn't knock people out but um actually had that nickname as well at one point um as a uh, as a drill sergeant when I was a drill sergeant I uh I remember the first time that I had ever uh, the first time that I ever, ever we call it a cycle you know you pick up a new cycle a new opportunity you know a private to train and, and on day one of course you know you you want to break them in, get them used to the environment and stuff. And I'm, I'm a pretty intense guy, you know. I used to be a heavy metal singer, so, so I'm just used to being really intense and like, uh, so yeah. So then, uh, yeah, I came in the chow hall like, like a day later or something like that. And like, and, and one of my fellow drill sergeants was like, oh, hey, there goes Hollywood right there. And so then it just stuck. It was Hollywood and hotel whiskey. So, so, so we, we have that in common. Um, of course, my fighter nickname was the rock star. Yeah, I'm a metal singer, so I Hell yeah. decided to go with a rock star. <laughs> hey, a rock star and a movie star. Those are like the two best things. Right, right, America, exactly. Right? <laughs> yes, or or uh, an MMA. Or a fist fighter. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty fighter. fucking That's pretty fucking cool, too. Man. That's so, really awesome. <laughs> so so let me ask you this. Like, how much weight do you, do you need to lose before you weigh in on, uh, what, Friday? Weigh in Friday? Yeah, I'll weigh in Friday. So my weight's pretty good, man. Like, uh, you know, obviously I've been training consistently since my last fight. I was supposed to fight back in April. That didn't happen. And then they told me I'd fight in June. That didn't happen. And then now here we are finally fighting uh, in July. So, uh, so you, those fights that were canceled, did you have opponents lined up? Uh, yeah, but it was never, like, finalized. Like, yeah, it was never, like, contract. a bout agreement right. in place. Right. Was that... Was that on the promotions end, or did you, um, did you get injured? No, I don't think it was the promotions. I think it was more or less the fighters. Like, uh, the, first, like the one guy, uh, we, we had everything like we were negotiating. You know, uh, Ryzen's cool. Like, you can negotiate rules there, too. So you can use, like, the ten, if you guys want to fight the 10-minute first round, 5-minute second, you want to do 3, 5 minutes, if you want to use elbows or no elbows. Like, it's pretty cool. So, uh, we were, we were. Oh, that's that is awesome. Yeah, it's really cool, right? It's like well, Pride didn't have the elbows, and that was one no, thing I thought yeah. was weird. Yeah, like, you can you can stop a guy's face and get elbow. Anyway. Yeah, they want the clean death. They want you. Uh, they want an unconscious body, you know, and elbows tend to cut instead and, of a cut. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, it's a little more efficient. <laughs> that's that interesting, man. Okay, so continue yeah. uh, the negotiation. Yeah, so we were we were negotiating mm. the fight, and uh, we had the rule set, everything, money was good, and then we were deciding on the weights. And he wanted to fight at 60, I said, uh, or no, he wanted to fight at like 70, I said no, I'll do 60, and then he wanted to fight at 65, I said no, 60, and he said 60, and uh, then we got a call the next day, and he said, yeah, I'm not fighting, so I think it was kind of like he was just kind of, you know, uh, didn't have a lot of the negotiating power with the, with the promotion, and then kind of had to dick tuck at the last minute, and, you know, and fight, I don't know. Yeah, and if he's a guy that's comfortable fighting at 70, yeah. Jesuit probably isn't going to make 60. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's what sunk in for him. So, so anyway, tell us about the guy who did agree to fight you this um, weekend. So, uh, yeah, so I'm fighting Satoru uh, uh, Kayatoka. I, I, I can't pronounce his last name. It's, it's hard to be an American. But Satoru, yeah. He's a veteran of the sport, man. This will be like his 73rd professional fight. Jeez. Um, he's got some w wins over some big name veterans. You know, fought in there with the biggest names. You know, Mazaval, Daly, you know, Carlos Condit. Like, uh, you know, I, the list goes on. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guys are a legend in the sport. Um, le big, big legend over there, obviously. So, uh, you know, fighting a guy like him is, is going to be so awesome. You know, it's good for their sock. Plus, um, you know, I'm ready. Like, I, I, I feel like I've been uh, just getting better and better and better. Made some life changes and just really made all the difference in how I approach my days, how I approach my training. And I'm excited to fight, man. I'm ready to be able to change it. One of the things too that's that's interesting about Japan and the culture and the fighting culture there is like, you know, anywhere else you go in the world, like 
anywhere in the states, any other country, if you're the if you're not the hometown guy, yeah. like people yeah. generally don't like you. you know, they they yeah. are kind of rooting against you. Japan, they they appreciate the gamesmanship so much that they actually. I mean, sure, they're gonna probably you know root for. Them. He's gonna have a lot of fans. Sure, but you're gonna be beloved as well. And if you beat them, like you're not gonna get booed. Like they're gonna yeah. They're going to show you a lot of love. For sure. That was the craziest thing, man. So I was lucky enough to have my UFC debut in Tokyo at the Saitama Arena. That was where I had my UFC debut. Wow. One fight of the night. So then I come back for my first fight with Ryzen, my second time fighting in Japan. And, uh, you know, we're at the weigh-ins. And I had just as many people cheering for me in the crowd as I did my opponent did. So it was, you know, I was like really kind of blown away by that. You know, like over there, the whole culture around MMA is so much different there. It's like, you know, they care about your spirit. They care about like the fighting, the one-on-one -on -one combat. And they, you know, they they kind of look up to you. And, and, you know, those you, kind of guys. You mean the fans aren't toxic like they are yeah, here? Yeah, they're definitely not toxic. Man. They, they, you know, like the sure. MMA fighters are like the highest glory. Really. Like they have so much respect for us and treat us like rock stars, man. Like, yeah, it's really cool. Speaking of rock stars, like I know a few cats that have you know toured over there, and they're like, dude, it's like it's like you're the Beatles, man. <laughs> like yeah. they just. They, they go crazy. So, what what's it like? Or I mean, you know, that that, that treatment. Like, what what's gonna like? Talk me through what happens when you get there and you land and get settled in. Like, what do you do up until the fight? Oh man, so like, uh, I just get in. You know, I have to. It's like an hour bus ride from the airport to the hotel, downtown Tokyo, and then you check in. You know, just like everything else, just like any other big promotion, you check in, you take photos, and you like, uh, you know, physicals, you know, stuff like that, like commentating, you know. And uh, and then you cut weight, and then the next day you cut weight, and then the next day you fight, and the next day you go home. So let's switch gears for a minute here. How has uh, working with Extreme Couture been? Because you were recently, uh, you know, came here from the MMA lab. Which yeah. They just won, uh, or not won, but they were nominated for the World MMA Awards for the, for the top gym. Yeah. Um, what made you what made you leave Phoenix and relocate in Las Vegas? And how do you feel about the decision now that you've been here for a little bit? So the, the like I love the MMA lab. Like don't get me wrong, like, that was my family. That is my family. That was where I was at. Uh, you know that really evolved my game tenfold. What actually made me come to a team tour in Las Vegas was uh, my, my girlfriend Emily went with me. And I ended up meeting her, and uh, we were training. And I had just been released from uh, the UFC at the time, so I, you know, I didn't have any real fights. And uh, I ended up getting signed to PFL. And um, you know, it just made sense to be here in Vegas. Obviously, the great stuff out here. You know, I'm trying to like sure. Plus, it's you know, it, it's and it's just been great for my my entire game. You know, like like I talked about earlier, just like my whole outlook has changed. You know, I'm just a happier person. I'm not like you know, fighting myself to want to get better every day. It's like, oh, I love what I do again. You know, I'm super happy, and it just it's, that's been that's been the, the main reason behind my growth the last eight months. Yeah. And that, that is a great gym. I've been there. It's an awesome, awesome facility. Tons of great fighters and, and coaches. I mean, yeah. uh, in fact, uh, one of your old teammates just, just got a win this past week. Alex Caceres yeah. got a win at, uh, at sit down in San Antonio. And Mario Batista as well. Yeah. He got fighting tonight. That's right. Yeah, he that was, Did they? I, yeah. I should have known better. Yeah. 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 They sent me the press release. After, you know what? Uh, that was an awesome fight. Yeah. Like, he looked... Yeah, I was actually, I actually set cage side for that. I tried to stay in the back as much as possible. Yeah. But when Batista was fighting, I was out there because it was one of the earlier ones. Yeah. So they hadn't started bringing people back yet. Have, did you work with him before? Like, yeah, dude. Like, I've, uh, yeah, I've known Mario since I was there at the, you know, at the MMA lab, which was, you know, I don't know when I went over there, like 2015, maybe. And I remember seeing him then. I was like, man, this kid's going to be good. You know what I mean? Like, he's always, and he's always consistent in the gym. Like, I mean, he's always good. Like, you can always mix it up with you know, the best guys in the gym. Moraga, you know, uh, Tank, you know, Mendez, like, you know, O'Malley. Like, he's in there, you know, and he's consistently hanging with those guys. So I knew then, like, he was going to be good. He was going to be the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we got on a sidebar, but I, I had to talk about that, actually. I'm glad, I'm glad you uh, brought his name up. So. So yeah, I mean the, the facilities are, are like night and day though. I mean like I mean both of them are great. This one is is more of kind of just an open uh, floor plan. Yeah, gets very crowded, but sometimes that's a good problem to have because you have a ton of volume, a ton of training partners. Totally. Are you are you here permanently now? Because as you've probably seen since you've been here, sometimes this can be kind of a transient place since it's in Las Vegas. Sometimes you get people that just kind of pass through. They'll maybe come here for their camp and then you don't. Know, 
officially part of the team. Uh, I think you are, though. I've pretty much seen you every single day since you, since you first got here. Yeah, yeah, I live here in Las Vegas. Yep. Uh, I mean, this is the the, doc, the primary gym in China, for sure. Yeah. Uh, if I, like, I feel, if I get, uh, you know, like, missing the MMA lab, and that's cool, too, because both the gyms here, both the, you know, everybody loves each other from both gyms, so, you know, it's nice to be able to just take a quick drive across the desert and, and go, uh, go roll with some of the old friends, go with some of my old friends, so it's kind of nice, I mean, it's, the freedom of training is, is really good, you know, like, just being on good terms with, with both gyms, and both gyms kind of having their own, like, like hidden gym, you know, or, you know what I mean, like, like hidden rewards to, to each gym, so it's awesome, man, but yeah, yeah, I should enjoy my friend, man, for sure. So, when you go over here to Japan and you fight this guy, what would be your preferred way to win the fight? If you had it, you're, obviously everybody wants to get in and get out of there, but everybody also has a favorite way that they like to win a fight. What do you want to do? Uh, super exciting knockout. You know what would be really good? Like if I can drop him with a right hand or like a right head kick and then uh, follow with some nice soccer kicks. You know I mean? I think that's always a brutal way to finish a fight. You know, I'm, not You're trying a to, I'm not trying to be brutal, I'm not trying to, you know, cause him bodily harm, but I think that's a pretty, pretty, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like like that's a pretty intimidating looking, uh, yeah. highlight reel. You know, yeah. You seeing someone get a soccer kick, like, oh man, that guy's a bad son of a bitch. That's gnarly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think about Shogun versus, uh, Rampage exactly. back in the day. Exactly. Shogun Rampage, also Vanderlei Silva, <laughs> had a couple, of, like, like, oh Jesus, I don't want to think any of that. So. Those are legendary. Those, legendary. Those that's last... the word I'm looking for. <laughs> yes. Those, those are timeless. They last forever yeah. and they're just, yeah, they're, they're so awesome. So, uh, tell me, Hollywood, where can we watch this fight? Uh, so you can order the app Fight TV, and uh, they will I, I'll tell you everything you need to know. It's like twenty bucks uh, starting off. So. Okay, so it's like a subscription service, but then yep. all the content. It's not like a pay per view, in other words. Nope. You just get the content. You get on the, all the content on Fight TV, and it covers like you know, more Thai fights, or it's boxing, or it's jiu jitsu, or wrestling, or it's MMA from all over the world. So it's definitely worth your buck to uh, to check out the app. One of your teammates walked by here earlier, Puna. Uh, one of the first guys to win a UFC contract on Contender Series. Yeah. Uh, did you get a chance to? Have you have you had a chance to check out the Apex or go to the Contender Series this season? I know you've been before. Yeah, I actually haven't. So uh, you know, Contender Series started what like four, where the four weeks now. I think weeks? yeah, tomorrow's week five. Actually. Week five, so going by so fast. I've been in fight camp, so yeah. you know, and they, they fight Tuesday nights. Uh, around the time I turned, so yeah. I haven't actually been ever to go check it out. So yeah, that was uh, a, that was a dumb question actually. I, I yeah, I should have known that. Absolutely, it is a scheduling conflict. Yeah, that's why there's like literally there's never anybody there. I see Brad there pretty much every week, but yeah, nobody else. Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Brad. I don't think has a fight in Brad, so Yeah, nice. right, right. Yeah, that's what he was telling me. So uh, all right, so Hollywood, where can we find you on social media if the fans want to follow your career? Yeah, hit me up Instagram and Twitter at Hollywood Case. Follow my fan page on Facebook, Johnny Hollywood Case. He's Johnny Hollywood Case. I'm an artist formerly known as Hollywood Drill Sergeant Edgar, now known as Rodney James, the rock star Edgar for Cape Side Press. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Thank you so much, sir. Best of luck in your fight, man. Thanks, brother.